Hi there, Alberto Savoia and welcome back to another episode of The Math of Success. This is another episode in the series where I answer questions that people that participate in the Exponentially uh, course on prototyping ask me. So uh, in this, this is another question that has to do with sample size. A lot of people are wonder, how do I pick the sample size for my prototyping experiment? Well, in a previous video, you can go back and, uh, and look. I taught you a very simple formula. Uh, the optimal sample size is equal to the number 1000 divided by x, where x comes from where? From the xyz hypothesis, right? If you don't know what that is, go back and watch the videos uh, from the beginning. So what you do is you pick up the percentage from the xyz hypothesis, say at least 10% of a certain market will buy your product, you plug it in, and you divide uh, 1,000 by 10 and you get 100 and in this case this will be your sample size. If your target market you plan to reach only 2%, it will be 1,000 divided by 2 which gives you 500. It means that you need to test with at least 500 people to come up with a meaningful optimal uh, uh, sample size. Now some people have difficulty with this concept of the uh, uh, estimated uh, market size, estimated percentage of market size that you're going to reach. Now, ideally, you know what the minimum is for you to make the product idea be worthwhile. If it's 0.001% of a market, probably you don't want to get uh, into it. Uh, but, and they don't like to guess, you know, I, I, I understand that. So thanks to a new friend of mine, Joe Maras, who is also a mathematician, a physicist, he likes number, he likes the way I approach things, he gave me a suggestion that is uh, sort of the opposite of my rule. Instead of starting with an X percent and, uh, you know, co as a sample size and coming up uh, using this formula 1000 uh, uh, over X, he said, well, why don't you just go and try to sell your product to people until you get the number, until you make 10 sales, which is statistically significant, and then see how many people you have to talk to to get those 10 sales. So let me explain how this works. And by the way, it's brilliant and I liked it a lot. Uh, so thank you, Joe. Uh, and I'm making a video and giving you credit. Now, what I want to do, hold on. Right, so let's assume we go back with my examples. I want to sell this very expensive uh, forever markers that never run out uh, of ink. All right, they cost $50. So let's say, and I have no idea what my market size is. I don't want to guess, you know, I just feel uncomfortable with that. So what I can do, I can still do my prototyping experiment. Uh, as we discussed, Maybe I make a deal with uh, Office Depot and I stand there and every time somebody comes to buy regular set of markers, I try to sell to them the forever markers that instead of costing five bucks, cost $50. Uh, $50. So, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to stay there and sell it. Let's say if it takes one day, one hour, two days, 10 days until I sell 10 of them. So let's assume, let's do the test one, first day, right? Uh, you go there, somebody comes and say, would you like to buy these? They're 10 times uh, the price, but they last forever. They say, no. So I put a red X. Second customers, no, another red X. Third customer, no, a third red X. Fourth customer decides to buy. So guess what? I put a green check mark, and that's my first sales. Nine to go. So, you know, the fourth, uh, fifth person says no, sixth person says no, then I sell two in a row. Anyway, I keep going and I stay there until I sell 10. And then after I've sold 10, I kept track of how many people I had to talk to in order to sell 10, you know, so how many people said no and how many people said yes. So let's say in this example, uh, 25 people said no, 10 people said yes. So I talked to a total of 35 people. So, and I sold 10. So you take 10 people I sold to divided by the total of 35. I get 29%. Now, for any product, this would be an amazing uh, uh, result. Uh, so, so this is kind of, I came up with an X, just with one simple experiment, but as you know, one experiment is never enough. No respectable scientist would stop at one. So we go back on day two, same thing. You know, I try to sell them. This, this day is a little different. The first person I talk to decides to buy. Uh, then, you know, I don't sell a bunch and then the, the, you know, I don't know, the eight, nine and 10 people all in a row, they buy. And anyway, I continue again until I get to sell 10. Now these days, maybe because my sales technique has improved uh, or whatever, 
I only had to reach um, 16 people said no instead of 25 and 10 people said yes. So I talked to a total of 26 people uh, and out of those 26, 10 bought it. So I get it 38%. So it's not exactly the same X percent, but this is not what, this is not what to expect, right? Uh, we don't expect the number to be exactly the same. There's going to be some variation. That's why we do uh, experiments. Eventually, they will converge. So we do a third day, same thing, you know, get a lot of no's. You get, you get some yes. So this time, 26 six people said no. 10 people said yes. So you talk to a total of 36 people to sell 10. So 10 divided by 36, you get 28%. 28% of the people that you that went to buy markers ended up buying uh, your markers right so this is pretty cool now what do you do so you, let's say we take the average of this number pre test result 29 38 and 28 comes up to 31 you know i like round numbers you know because we're still very fuzzy so 31 percent i'm going to round it to 30. so now i have an estimated uh x percent for my x was the hypothesis uh, and it will be like this, at least 30% of Y, my target market, will do Z, which is in this case by the markers for 10 times uh, the price. So uh, now I can use this formula, I can use the formula I originally gave you, say take 1000 divided by 30, and you get about 33. Uh, again, we round it to 30. So just to confirm you've done everything right, that this was an off fluke experiment, this time instead of trying to sell 10, you talk to a hundred people, uh, sorry, <laughs> you, you talk to 30 people because this is the, uh, the, the size, uh, uh, the optimal uh, uh, sample size. So you talk to 30 people and see if you sell 10, uh, give or take. So in, in other words, you've done a series of experiments trying to get to 10 to come up with a rough X percentage. And then once you have that rough uh, X percentage, do another experiment uh, to confirm. So for those of you who are uncomfortable or for some reason do not want to come up with the X percent in the XYZ hypothesis, this is a very cool technique. You just go and you try and you try to sell until you sell 10, which is a statistically significant number. And then you see how many people did you have to talk to to sell those 10. And this way you can come up with the X percent in an empirical uh, way. Then of course you've got to figure out if that X percent is enough for you to proceed with the product. Now, if this had been a real test, so if I was actually selling these markers for $50 and I was able to sell to 30% give or take of the market, that would be a spectacular result. And again, we want to confirm the result, right? Scientists, people approach things scientifically, always want to replicate the test, replicate the result. So you can do at least one more test to see if you can confirm uh, the data. So I hope this was useful. Uh, thank you, Joe Marasco, for this recommendation. And uh, see you here for the next uh, episode. Bye-bye and good luck.